Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Because um, of all this corona shit, um, everyone's sort of isolating. And um, yeah, I'm getting pretty bored. So, um, I've decided, I think it's 4.30 now in the afternoon on a Saturday. Um, and I've decided to pull the engine out of the RX-7 and pull it apart and see what's actually wrong. But I think I know what's actually wrong. It's pouring coolant down into the rotor housings and putting out the exhaust. So that means I've done a coolant seal. But um, we'll find out exactly what's wrong, make sure the engine's all good, so I can rebuild it, bridge port it, and put it back together and get it running again because it's been like, I don't know, four or five months since I last drove it. So yeah, um, quick rundown on the car. Uh, bought the car in 2014? Yeah, 2016. I bought it in 2016. Uh, so I've had it for four years now. Haven't done much to it. It came with a racing beat. Um, split exhaust up to the div. Um, I was pretty lucky with that because that's what I, the exhaust I was going to put on it or do a custom style like that. Um, been going, just been cleaning it up because it has been molested for like the past, I don't know, how many years. Because uh, I bought it off a guy who bought it from Sydney. He had it for four months and then I bought it off him. I got it at a good price and it, and it ran. So, I've just been cleaning it up, making it look good, making sure it runs. It's my most unreliable car, but it is probably my dream car. Um, I really want an RX-3, but you cannot get them for cheap. So, RX-3 is out of my dream, so RX-7 was the next. Um, completely fallen in love with this car, so nice. So what I've done, I've replaced all the bushes with uh, Super Pro bushes, the polyurethane ones. Um, I've put uh, the custom AC Bron coilovers in it, front and rear. So on the front, they have to chop off the old shock because it's connected to the spindle. Um, then they weld on their custom coilover onto the spindle and the rear is changed from a separate spring and shock to a complete coilover. So there's no more separate spring and shock, it's a true coilover conversion. Um, and that's about it. Oh, I did put a 48mm um, a um, MP Weber or MP carburetor on it, which is basically exactly the same as a Weber IDA 48. But it's a bit cheaper and it has a bit more features than the Weber. Um, got a tune by Anthony at Maztec and it made 128 horsepower, which is not a lot for what you think, but for a stock naturally aspirated 12A, that's uh, um, that's pretty powerful. So that means I have that good compression and everything, but now it's blowing a coolant seal. So. That's what we're doing now. I'm just going to super cheap to get a couple things and then go back, need to clean up, set up everything, and pull the engine out, pull it apart. So, catch up to you guys then. So, we've got what I've needed from super cheap. Uh, all I needed was some ratchet things. I was going to try and get the um, radiator hose pick tool so they come off a bit easier because these are always a bit of an asshole to get off because I've Worked a lot on the cooling system on this thing. Plan on doing this, so yeah. So here's the car. As you can see, it's just got. I don't know what wing this is. It came with the car. Um, I have done the um, US USA and JDM rear end on it. So I bought this, this is a brand new genuine part, well, new old stock part. Then I had to cut out the bumper frame and then install some lights up here so that would all work. 
It works pretty nice. That's the corn I'm talking about. So yeah. Um, a couple of stickers. Um, this is the 84, I think it's called like the GSL or something. So it has power windows, air conditioning, cruise control, power mirrors, heater. <laughs> Surprising for 1984. Just some other stickers. Um, oh, I do have some wheels in the back. I think they're, these are seven wide Star Sharks for Zero, so, um, some SSR Mark Threes, if you can see them. Um, currently on the rear is just uh, Bridgestone Potenza TRS wheels from the 80s. I think you can see the coil over there. So that's the coil over conversion there. Uh, inside, I haven't got the key yet. I'm gonna get the key. Uh, it's just a fake Nardi. I need to change that. That's stupid. Um, but yeah, that's it for the interior. The dash is like an S13 cracked everywhere. It's a dash mat. Um, front running six and a half with like I think plus four offset for the Star Sharks. And they're 14s. So, yeah. Looks nice, it looks definitely much better than how it used to be. This thing was a piece of shit. But now, I've cleaned it up alright. Oh, it looks like a piece of shit now because it's all dusty, but it looks alright, even though the respray that was done, who you know how many years ago, by some idiot didn't do it properly because they just sprayed, sprayed right over the old, and that's new paint, old paint. And as you can see here, like, they've like, but when the badge broke off, you can see they've just sprayed right over the badge. So, uh, I need to go up into the back shed, grab the engine stand out, I've already got the crane out. So, I'll grab the stand. I don't have a, like, you know, the, well, I don't know if you know rotis, but one of those things that adapts a normal engine stand to fit a ro rotary on it. I don't have that plate, I'll figure out a way, if not, I'll just chuck it on a crate or some shit like that, and we'll disassemble it, depending how far we get tonight, or today, which is like, almost 5 o'clock now, so quickly grab that out, so everything I need, and then drop coolant oil, intake exhaust off, I'm going to leave the transmission in it, just because I can't be bothered, I'm going to have to pull the hood off, because it's, because it's, um, ones which is like sick uh, but yeah all right we'll get into it got to show the engine bay before we crack on yeah. so it's a mp epc 48 carby with canyon filter it's got random sus fuel pressure gauge got um what are they called the melpassi fuel pressure regulator uh, racing bead headers, full exhaust. I think it's a yeah, it's HPI radiator um, with spell fans, Mishimoto fan controller. Um, there's a bit of corn everywhere. You can see the AC Bron top hats of the coilovers. Um, I think it's a Bonsai Racing um, alternator adjusting mod because these don't have an adjuster like this how you can see you can adjust the, the tension these factory don't so I was going to make one but a place in a USA made them I'm pretty sure it's bonsai race yeah. uh, what else we got um, I was in the series 3 RX7 or the SA20, SA22C in Australia and Japan, but in America it's called the FB. Um, the FB to us is like, I don't know, I don't know. It, gets, it gets a bit confusing, but this is a SA22C. So, the Series 3s normally have an oil cooler here with the oil filter sits on here. Um, they normally crack, so, and just for ease of everything and cleaner look, I got rid of it. 
and installed all speed flow fittings and lines for an oil cooler. This would be the same as a Series 1 or 2 RX7 SI22C. But yeah, that's basically it. So, pretty simple setup, but it's fun, sounds good. I still got a lot of shit to do before I even start even pulling the engine out, but. And so, currently, I've got the, the car up on stands, draining oil and cooling. As you can see. Um, just inspecting the sun plug, because I got a magnetic thing on it. Doesn't look too bad. Little, little bit of metal. Could be from the oil cooler. Probably didn't clean it out properly. But there's a bit of metal on it. Not too concerning, but when we take the sump off, we'll, we'll know for sure. Um, probably is a little concerning. Um, also, on these, if you do tighten up the alternator pulley a bit too much, you do wear out the front bearing on the crank. In from bearing, so you could be that, but I don't know, they don't seem too tight. But I right, also this has upgraded alternator, I think it's 110 amp. And for that, all you have to do if you have FB or SA22C, all you have to do is uh, if you see, well, this is off of FC, so I think it's series 4 or series 5 alternator. Um, you get this plug, and all you have to do is wire this back to your um, ground for the um, sense. I forgot which color that is, but I can look down there for you if you really want to know. You just wire this one to here, so which is the battery sense. So there's a battery sense that goes to your battery, that goes to that, and then. Well, you can put a fuse in between here and here, but I didn't, people don't do it, I didn't, I didn't really have time, and then I bought one, like a fuse to go between it, and I never got around to doing it, so I might get around to doing it, do it properly, so, hopefully, so yeah, we're just draining the coolant, all the fluids, and then, Probably take off the whole carbon intake as one piece. Well, but before that, we'll take off all the hoses and the radiator out and this out so we can have space. Um, take the leads off, throttle cable, we'll take the carbon intake off as one piece, exhaust, um, just all the lines in there, take off the clutch slave. And um, we'll do bell housing bolts. You want to leave two bell housing bolts in. So you can just take them all out, leave two in, and then when you go to the crane um, up to the engine, you can just pull it out. And all you have to do is two bolts and then boom. So yeah, we'll do all that shit. And I uh, hope you get around next time. I'm to ya. I'll be engine out. And hopefully, oh, I don't think they're going to take it apart tonight because I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to bolt the engine up to this, if you know with rotaries. They use a plate to those, an adapter plate. Um, I don't have one. Let's see how far I get tonight, if I'll take the engine apart tonight. If not, I'll have to do it tomorrow. And then getting the flywheel off, that's going to be a hassle, but we'll leave that for tomorrow. Alright, so I've got the oil cooler lines off. I've got all the stuff for the fans off, hoses off, um, sliding whatever drain out of the oil cooler, um, started pulling the exhaust off, um, it's leaking cooling out of it so that's not a good sign, um, well I already know that, but a lot of dry cooling, there's <laughs> even, um, like, it's that puddle there, that's coolant from the exhaust, <laughs> so, definitely not fun, but, um, yeah, I'll try and pull this off now. Oh, that's on there. So, oh, I just got the header off. Look at that. So, D 
definitely blew a corn seal. Not good. Well, if it's a corn seal, if it's something more. Not good, but. That one there's pretty dry. That one, filled with corn. Not good at all. So, engine is out. I know it took my time, but I've been screwing around at home, taking my time. Um, yeah, you get caught up in conversation with people and shit like that, but yeah. She's out. It's the clutch that's only been on for like 3,000 kilometers. And then, yeah, so. Most of the damage is. In the first row of that is corn. That should not be there. That should be in the cooling system, obviously. But yeah. That's the rotor there. So, yeah. And this one. Dry. Just carbon deposits on the rotor. So. It's all in the first one. So. We shall fix that. Hopefully it's nothing major. Hopefully it's just a seal. Reseal it. New... Rotor seals in it, so apex seals, side seals, corner seals. Uh, probably do some supporting upgrade mods for the bridge port. Um, have to get either a locked dizzy or one with a tougher spring. So as you go up in RPM, that when the timing changes, it doesn't uh, I think it, it doesn't retard it too much. I'll explain why later. Um, Clean up the exhaust for the corn. A bit of oil in there because I did have an oil leak. I had an oil leak coming from that, that, and the pedestal there, so it was leaking down in here. So that's why I have oil in the bell housing, but I think I'll do the input shaft bearing at the same time because it was making a bit of noise. And the speaker bearing is replaced because I didn't replace it when I did the clutch because I. bit of a asshole to get out but I just see BF at the time. Um, I think we'll clean up the engine bay a bit more. Try to get rid of a lot of that shit. Yeah, she's out. Now I just need to figure out how to mount this to this without an adapter plate. The adapter plate normally goes bolts under one of these holes here and then goes into normally that and I don't, I don't have one, I haven't bought one, this is a last minute thing sure, I don't know what I'm going to do but I'll figure it out because um, you have to take the engine apart with you, know, you have to take clutch flow off and then rear iron you know, take it off from the back to the front I will figure out a way how to do that. So, it's the next day. Um, I have to go into work and pick up um, my air gun because my electric ratchet, well, electric gun isn't strong enough for the flywheel. And I gr need to grab my socket for the flywheel. So, doing that, um, just grab me a few other things. Um, because I didn't expect to do this because it was like a very last minute decision to pull the engine out and pull it apart. But yeah, we just need to grab some tools and then, um, yeah, we'll go back, disassemble the engine. I only have all the bolts I can find start working on this thing. First thing I'm going to do, uh, take this big nut off and take the flywheel off. Oh, we'll just undo the nut actually because these flowers can be a bit of an asshole to get off. So we'll just undo the nut and then I've got bolts to bolt. Well, bolt. These two parts, well, these two things, the engine crane to here somewhere. Yeah, I think we're going to have to do it there because, or there. Now we'll have to do it there, yeah. I'll figure it out. So I figured out a way how to get the plate on. Uh, just two bolts in here, because we're taking from rear off. I couldn't get 
the Sirs bubble. Well, I was originally going to try and go here, but I couldn't get, I couldn't find a thread pitch for an M12 at Bunnings or Super Cheap, so, um, yeah, so that'll do for now. Just to not put too much stress on it, I'm going to take the flywheel off before I get it on the stand and water pump and stuff so there's not too much weight on it, but it should be alright. And to get the flywheel off, I've already got the nut off, I just left it on a bit. Um, I'm going to bang it in these, well, bang it off. You want to bang it pretty hard because these are a bit of an arsehole to get off, but she'll come off. So, weight E protection and hit it not on this surface, just hit it on these ones, so yeah. So I've got water pump off, sump off and pick up off, um, trying to get the crank pulley off, but um, don't have a compressor that has strong enough air, so I'm going to have to do it the old fashioned way and I'll just lightly put the flower back on and what you do is put a clutch bolt in, get a spanner or whatever you want, and put a bell housing bolt in and that locks the um, flywheel into place and I think, no I put it in the correct way, yeah I put it in the correct way, yeah. Well, um, yeah, my theory didn't work as it normally does. So I'm gonna have to take the engine out to, or we'll take the engine out to the breakdown van and um, use the compressor in that. Great. I now have the front cover off, and everything's off. So we can now flip it over and start taking apart, not well, taking all the um, sandwich bolts out. All the holds the engine together, uh, but first what we've got to do is take off the oil pump and the balancer and this gear and all all this stuff here. So we'll do that first. They're 10 mils, so they're just in here. There's just four of them, so just do them, take them off, and then we'll flip it over and then start taking out the bolts. So I've uh, gotten the rear rotor off. I've got it all disassembled at the moment. So I have oil control rings and springs and then all my side seal springs and side seals, apex seals and they're, they're the um, they're three piece, I mean two, I mean two piece apex seals. Um, there are your springs for them. Um, there's your corner seals, and I'll grab my light. Bearing looks a bit iffy. Um, it's not too bad on the crank, but I can't feel too much there. Probably just a bit of a polish up. But that looks a bit how you going. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. That might be might be okay. There's a bit of wear a lot of wear there. Um the more problem is the if you can see there the chroming here has come off. So that's not good. And I do have a slight get it. There's like crack on where the spark plug hole is. It's like right there and there. And also there. If you can see it. Yeah, it's just there and there. So that means probably new rotor housing. But um, yeah, we'll take it all apart, have a look at everything, make sure everything's all good. Um, it's not looking 
too well looking a bit rough. The rear bearing is a bit how you going as well. And also the front bearing is a bit difficult. So new bearings so far and maybe new rotor housings and just a good clean up on the rotors and everything. But we'll pull the rest apart and have a have a good look at it. So I'll let you know that so engine is completely disassembled. Coolant seals not good. That's supposed to be one whole big O-ring. They're not. So only the black ones survived. All the orange ones, rotten, gone. So it's time for them to go. Um, bearings. Gonna have to replace all the bearings. Bit of scoring on the crank or the E-shaft, but I think it'll be okay to go again. Maybe just a polish, or I might have to grind it down and go oversized bearings. But. That's up to when I take everything to a rotary specialist and get a proper opinion on everything. And measure it all up. Get all clearance, well, make sure the clearances are good and I can use everything. Rotors, they look okay. But there's no hits or dings like it's been hitting the rotor housing, so it looks good. Um, there is only, I'm not sure about 12 A's, but there is only three apex seal springs and there should be two I'm pretty sure but yeah so another thing is is the irons and housings the irons have seem to have a lot of wear over on this side so on the spark spark plug side of each iron seems to have a lot of wear so, not too much over here, but it's on the spark plug side. I don't know why. I need a proper opinion on it. Um, because that looks a bit, that's concerning. The first rotor. Let's have a look at this one. Looks like it's had a bit of a battle before. So it's got massive scoring here. I don't know whether that's from previous engine dramas or, you know. It does seem look like something's gone through, as you can see there. And this big score up here, and the chrome is missing here. So that might mean new housing. But, I'm pretty sure I showed you this one before. <laughs> this one, chrome missing. The cracks on the spark plug holes. Not very good. I'll probably have to get new housings. Might be able to machine out the... Um, irons or plates as you call them and get them re nitrided clearance all well um, I will get everything balanced and clearanced properly if they need to be clearanced but balancing is key just want it all balanced because we're going to go Bridgeport so that means more RPM and that means we're going to have to do some other slight modifications but nothing too major let's just make sure everything's good so I can put it back together so now, um, I'll explain Bridgeport. As you can see here, this is a stock port. And with a bridge, you normally come up, you extend this, this port out above here, a little bit down here, and clean out all here. And then you add an eyebrow above here, with a gap in between this port and this port, for these corner seals which run in the corners of the tips of the rotor. That is so that little eyebrow there is to stop them from falling in and causing catastrophic failure basically. But you get more power, bigger port, double it. So we we'll also have to make bigger exhaust ports. So um, I'll find out. Well, first, I'm going to go to a special a rotary specialist and um, make sure everything is Mickey Mouse before I even start doing anything like that. But yeah, we'll find out soon. Hopefully, very soon, because I would like to put this back together. Hopefully, very soon. Oh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, just a quick isolation weekend. Um, got bored. Pulled out the motor, pulled it apart, 
so see what was see what was wrong, and we have found the problem and a couple more problems. But that's good. At least I know what I'm up for now. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Peace out.